How's it going everybody? My name is Armando and welcome back to the channel. Uh, to the 100 viewers that have been watching me for the past two weeks, I just want to say sorry for the time there. I've been kind of busy and to the people that are new to the channel, welcome. So in today's videos guys, we'll be talking about me upgrading my pre-build. So before, you know, the pre-build, let me just explain or give you guys some backstory. So before I bought the pre-build and upgraded the pre-build, I used a computer. It was a little ThinkPad, it was a laptop and it was basically this guy right here. You know, it did the job done. I used to use an editing software called Sony Vegas. And well, I just did little things for people here and there. And you know, did a pretty good job, you know? Eight gigs of, uh, of RAM, 256 gigs of HDD. And what was the last one? An i7 processor. So, you know, it did the job quite well. But over time, you know, I used to play a game called Death Frontier 3D. It didn't require that much power. I was very content. But then eventually I'm like, I want to play games. I, I want to edit more. I want to use Photoshop, Premiere, After Effects, you know, so that little computer didn't really do the job at all. So I went into the, you know, online and I looked up, you know, uh, good gaming computers. I don't know why I looked up gaming. OK, I just wanted to game and have something power enough, powerful enough to edit. So I found one on Best Buy, you know. <laughs> It was an HP Omen desktop, and mind you, I never owned a desktop in my life. It's just been uh, laptops or you know those monitor that has the pieces in the in the screen. So, yeah, I, I never really knew much about this. So, what kind of pre-built did I buy? Again, it was an HP Omen desktop. It had a GTX 1070, uh, one terabyte of hard drive data, an i7 7700 processor. It wasn't a case, so I couldn't overclock it. So and 16 gigs of DDR4 RAM. So how much did I pay for this uh, POS? I paid $1,400. I know many of you guys right now are going like, what were you thinking, dude? I mean, when you look at it from my point of view, which I mean, back in the day, I didn't know much about computers. I had the money, I had it saved up and I had a decent job. So I was thinking I'm going all in. So <laughs> I said, screw it. This uh, desktop should be more than enough for me for the next five, six years. And boy, was I wrong. Uh, time skip to eight months later, I was watching a video or opening up a file video and it froze and then it made a weird uh, screeching kind of sound for the next five minutes. So I waited and waited to see if it will, if it will go away. I, hold, I held the power button. I forced uh, power, you know, I forced powered it off. I booted up again and then the unthinkable happened. The, uh, the mouse and keyboard light up for like five seconds and then the logo would just stay there. I will click and click and click and click and nothing will happen. So when I took it back to the Geek Squad and Best Buy, uh, it took them three weeks to find out what was wrong with it. And they told me the motherboard was basically destroyed. I don't know how. I mean, it's only been six months. So yeah, after that, I mean, it happened one more time, but this time I didn't do that. I basically just put it to sleep. I pushed it once. Went to sleep, I put it up again and the problem went away. So yeah, if you guys are having that problem, don't ever force power down your computer. It might do some damage. Anyway, enough of that. So, I mean, why did I need to upgrade in the first place? Because many of you guys are thinking, Yo, I just thought you wanted to buy, you know, play some games and edit. Well, yes and no. I mean, what was starting to get to me, well, what was starting to get on my nerves was when I would turn on the computer, you know, it will boot in 30, 40 seconds. And even then when I got to the, uh, to the login screen, it will be very, very, very laggy. And it will sometimes freeze on occasions for like five to 10 seconds, but it would just be very sluggish. So upon entering the passcode, you know what you get into the windows, it will be in a hundred percent disk usage. And let me tell you something, that thing was a total nightmare. If you guys know anything about the disk usage problem in windows 10, whatever, yeah, it would just piss me off. So it will take around a long last five seven minutes for it to finally calm down and even then after that i wouldn't turn it off because i just didn't want to deal with the seven eight minute boot up and the whole this usage it, it was just annoying and of course you know games take up a huge huge amount of memory or storage so i mean for example resident Evil 2 took up 60 70 gigs rainbow six siege 100 plus gigs so you can you can see where i'm coming from that little terabyte of hard drive i had <laughs> It didn't really do much at all. On top of, you know, the photoshopping I had to do for other people, video editing, yeah, it just didn't last me. So eventually I just told my buddy, which I'm gonna name, his name is Kenny. I'm not saying last names, I don't want you guys looking him up. <laughs> I told him, hey buddy, uh, can you help me upgrade, you know, this computer, you know, on top of that, I could tell that the computer was sometimes overheat because the fans would go, voo -voo -voo -voo, you know, it would start spinning like crazy. And yeah, that HP Omen uh, case was garbage. So I had to buy a, you know, a new case, a new power supply, because you know the one I had wasn't that great. I bought um, an SSD, 526 gigs, an M21, and then I bought a fan, which I later returned because, unfortunately, HP likes gluing this bracket in the back of the motherboards. I couldn't stick the other one on, so 
waste of money. And I instead traded it in for a terabyte of external hard drive data. So yeah, so how much does it all cost? You know, a 750 watt battery, an NZX medium case, the M2, and uh, well, and the uh, HDD that I bought, eh, around close to $300. You know, it wasn't that bad, you know, in terms of like parts and upgrades, you know. And plus the NZXT that I bought, the medium case, it came already with uh, three fans on top of the one I had from the old one, from the old HP Omen uh, case. It looked like a great deal, all right? so. Yeah, uh, but I'm gonna show you guys now the video of us struggling through, you know, the process. Um, it was a pain in the ass. I'm just gonna say that. HP likes doing something with their cases where they don't allow you to upgrade or take anything out of there easily. Of course, if you wanna upgrade, you gotta bring it back to Best Buy or whatever and they'll charge you for doing that. And I said, nah, screw that. I just wanna take off the piece of glass or whatever is covering it and have a nice presentation of my parts and not me looking at this humongous mess that you guys are about to see in this video. So without further ado, Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and yeah, let's get right into it. So upon looking at the NZXT case, you can tell it's a very beautiful case. It has two RGB fans in the front and there was an extra fan in there that unfortunately you cannot see in there. I don't know, I, don't, I think it was tucked away on the bottom or it was, I think, screwed on top. But overall, the case only costs $80 and I very much recommend this case. I mean, it was a micro center and I just, you know, I fell in love upon looking at it. And now we cut to the part of the HP Omen case. This case we call an atrocity. As you can tell just from looking at it, it just looked like a jungle of a mess in there. The cables were everywhere. The graphics card was right there in the center. There was a huge metal bracket. And as you can tell, it was very, very dusty. Why? Because, well, I had it on the floor because everybody was like, oh, yeah, it's the same thing. It's not the same thing. Don't put your, your desktop on the floor. It'll just get so much dust. And as you can tell there from the bottom right, there's only two fans. One on the, you know, that's basically a screw to the metal part of the case. It was for airflow. And the other one was just... For the processor so it was two fans in total so you can imagine like there was no airflow getting into that case there was, there was just no way and me being the guy that i am the editor the photoshopper the gaming one uh, you can imagine this just heating up like crazy so i i mean i'll be gaming editing and this thing will just lag or be sluggish or it would just crash and i would be editing it will piss me off i was like what is happening with this computer so i said one day enough is enough and as you can tell we're here now so the first obstacle we encountered was this metal bracket i mean it took about 30 minutes to take it out of the case. I can still explain why HP does this. But yeah, uh, excuse the mess in the, in the bed that's coming up. But there is something I do want to talk about, guys. It's this black kind of texture on the graphics card. I mean, I didn't understand it, but if you guys can comment down below what it is, yeah, just let me just show you. See yeah, how it's like it starts to spread? Mm -hmm. Like it didn't touch the edges in some areas? Like, see how it didn't go from here? Mm -hmm. If, it, if you would have kept going, it would have gone all the way and then it would have been usually just fried. So you have it guys after you know overcoming that first little metal bracket obstacle pain in the ass uh i just wanted to get things done already you know my friend was telling me this usually takes like an hour or two just to transfer the parts from one case to another and you turn it on and it was ready to go but of course hp doesn't want you to do that they want you to suffer and not be able to take anything out so in terms of like case design you guys suck but in terms of not allowing people to upgrade their uh, computers 10 out of 10 guys you guys did a great job you know terrific you guys should probably just stick to that though assholes anyway <laughs> so here we are i basically transferred the motherboard to the nzxt case you know that motherboard looked like a small child in a humongous mansion it was just funny to look at i wanted to get another motherboard an msu motherboard but my friend was like why are you doing that you're just wasting money you know it's gonna do the same thing it just has you know other benefits to it and he was right you know i'm like, kind of glad i saved like my 150 there and here we have here we have the fan you know it wasn't a huge waste of money i did trade it in for a terabyte of hdd but yeah kind of sad i couldn't put it on the processor because i feel like the processor is the most important part and here we are we're almost done with you know putting everything together i was actually getting excited i was like yo i can't wait to put everything back together i'm gonna have a brand new computer but of course it wasn't that easy because when we went ahead and turned this thing on the unthinkable happened 
So yeah guys, here we are back again. Sorry about that. I didn't really record while this was happening. So what ended up happening is once we got everything in the NZXT uh, case, we went to turn it on and you know, we connected the monitor, the keyboard and everything and nothing will happen. I mean, the fans were run, but we realized that one of the fans wasn't running. It was just lighting up. So then, you know, we ran out of options. We were like, yo, what could it, what could it be? I don't, I don't know if we connected everything right. It could be a thermal paste. It could be the, the, the RAM. So we took it to this guy, Micro Center, uh, Micro Center, you know, like, it sucks, my, this customer service. So we went there, my friend was trying to explain everything, Kenny, to him and say, hey man, this was going on, and you know, I tried connecting the pins to the motherboard, and he goes, pins, what, what are you talking about? Well, you know, we ha I, I haven't seen a graphics card with pins since the 1900s, or whatever he was saying, just being an, a sarcastic dickhead, and we said, okay, you know, whatever, we didn't let that get to us. And we asked him, how long would it take for you to kind of take this and figure out what's going on with it? He says, well, we're a little backed up. Uh, it might take us three weeks to finally get to it. And even then, we might not figure it out. We're like, we just looked at him like, no, okay, so whatever. You just wasted my time. Cool. So then I contacted my good buddy, Miguel. All right. So Miguel is a whiz at this kind of stuff. You know, he, he basically learned everything about it. He was kind of, I don't know how long he's been repairing or fiddling with computers, but it's been a while. He's been doing it for quite a while. So we took it to him, he looked at it, and he just started unplugging everything to see where the problem is, because he said, the most basic thing you can do is just unplug everything and replug re everything back in. So he did that, you know, and the thing turned on, it started spinning, everything started spinning, the, the, the lights, the LEDs all came on. And then, you know, the monitor, it came to the monitor issue, and it was just a huge mess, because, you know, you have to, like, download the driver for the graphics card, and we connected to the motherboard, we had, to, you know, some BIOS started going on, and yeah, it was a huge pain in the butt. But then everything started working, you know, the monitor turned on and he basically customized the, the, the you know, the processing unit. Um, for example, I had just regular Windows 10. He gave me Windows 10 Pro. Then he uh, gave me the Microsoft apps for Microsoft Word, PowerPoint. And then he also downloaded some other things that could help me out in terms of editing and, you know, graphic designing just to keep everything organized. And well, after that, I mean, you know, three, four hours later, it's 2.5 gigs of storage data, you know, the battery, the, the, everything else. and. You know, this is a result. Let me just show you guys. So as you can tell, the computer now performs absolutely phenomenal. I mean, the booting went from like 30 seconds to like four or five seconds, and there's no longer 100% disk, disk usage. That is a thing in the past. And let me t tell you something, it feels absolutely amazing. You know, no longer do I have to wait or, or look at my phone for 10 minutes just to wait for the computer to settle down and, you know, perform to its absolute great performance now i can edit and the pieces or the parts aren't overheating now i mean it obviously has a better you know better airflow and better you know it's basically a larger case so it was a 300 dollars worth uh upgrading i mean buying i have to say yes a hundred percent yes and just remember guys i am in no terms a freaking you know a genius or whatever a professional when it comes to you know doing this kind of stuff as you can tell i had to get two people to help me out which were kenny and miguel and Miguel was basically the one that got everything working, you know, he got everything functioning, everything, you know, in place. And he did a great job. I'm not him, all right? But the way, the reason why I made this video is because you can see it from my point of view. You know, I'm not, like I said, I'm not a professional. I'm not a guy who's going to be saying, yeah, this is it. You know, this is what I got. You know, it's just your average Joe trying to upgrade a pre-built. And as you can tell, this pre-built was a pain in the butt. So do I recommend you buying a pre-built as your first computer? Well, it depends who you buy it from. But overall, I'm always against pre-builds now. You know, I told my sister or my nephews, I said, listen, if you want to ever buy a computer, let me help you pick out the parts. I'll contact my buddy. He'll give me some advice and then we'll go into it. Because as you can tell, these pre builds are a pain in the butt. If they're from HP or Dell, 100% is going to be a pain in the butt. It's so clustered together, so many screws, so many parts that I have to take out or we have to take out. And then not only that, but then you got to transfer the parts to the, to the, you know, the new case. And sometimes it'll work or maybe you're just missing a piece or you're missing something or maybe you broke something and now the system isn't working. So, yeah, huge pain in the butt. 
but I believe like systems or you know companies like from uh, CyberPower or iBuyPower, whatever you know, that's not Walmart brand. Don't don't buy Walmart. I'm sorry. Um, that are actually dedicated to you know gaming computers like legit gaming computers for professionals. I do recommend them because I'm I have a feeling that they will want you to upgrade the computer over time, and they specifically made that computer so you can upgrade. You know they're not a big pain in the butt like this one was. But yeah, guys, hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'm sorry for the long rambles and the long talks. I'm sorry if it wasn't so informative. You know, this wasn't a, this wasn't a you know a step by step of what we did. It was just a quick summary, because like I said, I want you guys to see it through my eyes. I'm not a huge whiz on it, so yeah. Without further ado, this is the end of the video. This is Armando signing out, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Take it easy. Bye.